have the Muslims, we have the African Americans, we have the Native Americans, we have the Hispanic, we have young people, we have women. And so what I do is, I go out to those different communities, I dialogue with them, I sit at the table with them, and I talk about their issues and their concerns. Because even as the Democratic Party, we think we know the concerns of different communities, but yet we do not. Because sometimes you need to engage those individuals, those different groups, and let them have a voice and let them tell you what the issues are within their community. Because even within the Native American community, we found out for different tribes, there may be separate issues. Even within the Hispanic community, someone coming from Mexico to someone coming from Argentina, their issues are deep, different. Even in the African American community, Northside Tulsa, their issues are different than the big picture of Tulsa County Democratic Party. And so we bring those individuals to the table with veterans, younger veterans, their issues are different than those that are part of the Vietnam War. Where, so we bring those individuals to the table, I engage them, I, we uh, formulate different caucuses. We have different caucuses within the Democratic Party from the Veterans Caucus to now we are formulating a caucus for the LBGT community. We're uh, designing a caucus for the Black Leadership Caucus for the African American community. Women, Young Women Caucus. You say, why if you have a women's caucus, Federation of Democratic Women, why would you need a young women's caucus? You'll be surprised how different younger women's thoughts are in regards to the state federation. Because sometimes, as they say, you need some old folks to get out the way and let their issues be heard, more progressive issues. So that is basically what I do as the outreach person. I bring those people to the table. I communicate their concerns and their issues. But also, I talk to them about precinct training. How do they get involved with the party? I talk to them about how do we get candidates from those different communities? Because people are looking for a diverse background, diverse picture of candidates. They are, and excuse the expression, I want to be honest with you, they are tired of looking at candidates that fit the same demographics that we've had within the party for years, and that is older white men. They want to see some women up in there. They want to see some people of color up in there, all colors. And so we look for candidates. We look for progressiveness, whether you're dealing with a woman's right to choose, medical marijuana. People want to bring that as the times are changing, people want to know the Democratic Party is changing with the time and that we're not stuck. Because sometimes being stuck means you don't grow. And so we come to groups like yourself and we talk about how do you become, because whether you believe it or not, precincts are the backbone of a party. You are the ones. It's not us with these cute titles. It is you that knock on doors, that call your neighbors, that stand in the street and you talk about the issue. You are the backbone of the party. So the growth and the foundation of the party begins at the precinct level, neighbor to neighbor. I tell people the best thing about precinct, it means it gives you a legal right to gossip. It does. It gives you a legal right to go and tell your neighbor, guess what I heard? And legally, you can do it and not feel bad about it. <laughs> so that's what we want to talk to you about the precincts. And I would hope that first, and I'm going to ask Liz later on, I know she gave you somewhat of a presentation about the uh, data and everything in regards to how you can get information, but I'm going to ask her to come back at a certain point and reintroduce that because that is important. Because that is how you build your precinct. That is how you build your neighborhood. That is how you know who is in your neighborhood because that is how candidates, the best friend of a candidate is a precinct officer. Did you know that? If candidates are not calling your precinct officers, then they don't know the structure of the party. 
They should be knocking on your doors, finding you wherever you are at Circle K, 7-Eleven, and saying, I heard you my precinct chair. Because you're the ones that get out the vote and mobilize and activate people for them. They need you. You're the ones that tell them these are the issues you need to be standing on. Because they can say, well, education, but what about education? Do they know that they may be shutting down the school within your neighborhood? It's a broad picture, say education, but how do they connect? Do they know that one neighborhood might want charter schools and one neighborhood may not want it? So that's why precinct officers are important. First, I'm going to go through and uh, hopefully, and I'm going to ask uh, my friend, Brother Ali, to pass out. I left some agendas on the table, and there are some stacks of information, and we will not, um, as I tell them in church, and let me say this, I say I always have to be honest with folks before I start. And so if I get long-winded, count it to my other occupation because I'm a pastor. So if I start hallelujah, and if I happen to pick up a hat and Tell somebody to pass around. Tell me it's the wrong meeting. Okay? So that means, Brother Eddie, you, you, you better hold on to that hat because I might start passing around and taking up an offering. So y'all say, uh-uh, you're in the wrong meeting, okay? Not preach, not preach. Okay. See, you're trying to make me preach. But that preach. That's how you hear the pastor on you say, that preach. <laughs> so we're going to go through, and we may uh, move around a little bit, but I want to go through, and I want you to go as he gives you a pack, an agenda, and I'm going to ask uh, Brother Eddie, if you pass our beats, Liz, if you do this for me, throw him down, my stack them. And I want you to turn to the first part that says, the responsibility of priesthood. I'm not good at standing at a podium, so again, I, I want to move around. Again, as I'm talking, if you have a question, stop me. Don't just say, well, because I'm not assuming anything, and don't assume anything about me. If you have a question, I'm moving too fast or something, just say, wait, hold up. But the first page, if I want you to go to, it says, Precinct Chair. Let me say, first of all, the selection for precinct officers will begin in March of 2007, the official precinct meeting. But, there is a but. If there is an open precinct in your area right now, I want you to hear this. Someone, they passed out to your constitution and bylaws. But if there's an open precinct in your area right now, you can be appointed to that position. You don't have to wait till March. If that position is open right now, a chair, a vice chair, a secretary, you can be appointed or you can call Tulsa County Democratic Party and say, my precinct is open. It does not have a chair. I want to fill that position. It can be done. When they say no, get your constitution and bylaws and say, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because I'm going to tell you why the precinct officer is important not only to candidates, but to the state party. Because there's a process that it falls into, and that you are you become like God. Not only for the county, but the district and for the state. Okay? On this first sheet, it talks about the precinct chair. It talks about, of course, the precinct chair presides over the meetings. 
presides over the meeting. The meeting means where the precinct chair, you may decide that you're going to do, I don't care whether you decide that you're going to work with candidates within your precinct. Let me do this, say this. As Democrats, we have to get out of the mindset that we're just going to work with candidates to run on a state level. The Republicans have had an upper hand on us. That's right. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. <laughs> One of the things that the Republicans have done is they started training them when they were on school boards. Mm-hmm. That's true. They would snatch them up. One of the great stories I always tell, what is my uh, United States Senator? Come on. Who? Who? In no, not in Hall. Yeah. Langford. Langford. Okay. <laughs> Langford was a Boy Scout leader. Someone saw him at a Boy Scout camp. They liked the speech that he gave. The next thing I know, never been on a school board, never been on a city council, mm-hmm. but they thought he looks like a kid. I thought he looked like E.T., but they said, I look like Santa. I'm like, that's what we're going to do. He sounds good. He looks the part. We got the money. So we're going to do what? We're going to run him for Congress. And the next thing I know, he was 5th District Congressional. Mm -hmm. How about I said, I've never been a member of the Boy Scout. But I support him. Nobody ran me for Congress. Maybe you should. But they ran him for Congress. So they would start at school board level, at churches. They would go to different churches, considering how can, you know, and they would handpick candidates, groom them. That's right. Embed it with them, faith, family, and, and freedom. They didn't have to believe it. Just be able to say it. And they could become our next governor of the United of Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Look at Mary Powell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they said, we'll clean them up. And look what they did with Mary. No. They cleaned up. Not enough. They said, we don't, well, nobody cares. <laughs> She's still the governor. And they said, forget about the state trooper thing. We'll clean you up. So we have to begin, start looking, and I tell young people when I go to high schools, don't do anything that will come back and haunt you. True. If you're intent on running for office, make sure now. So we have to start looking at city council races, school board races, and start looking at, because some of our legislators in Oklahoma City started at our city council. True. And so we have to start looking at that level and not looking for just seasoned folk, we need to start looking at young folks. Mm-hmm. Because sooner or later, we're going to have to step back and let them take over. So we got to be willing to educate and inform them about what needs and the issues. So a precinct chair presides over a meeting. I don't care if you can have a ice cream social, you might be good at baking cookies. You may be good at telling folks just to bring cookies. <laughs> I can't bake cookies, but I know how to tell folks to bring me some cookies <laughs> with macadamia nuts in them. And I'm Pacific. <laughs> and I got to have lemonade. Don't bring no Dr. Pepper, because my doctor said I can't have no more Dr. Pepper. But I'm good at delegating. A chair has got to be willing to delegate and not work themselves into a frenzy. So you say, well, I don't want to be a chair. You got to be willing to say that I have a neighborhood and involve everyone in the neighborhood and realize that everybody, I don't care what their talent is, is special. I don't care if it's baking, whatever it is, bring them to the table. Even that person that gets on your last nerves and that always asks the question, you tell them at the right time, I'm going to say a key word. 
That means ask all the questions you can. <laughs> Utilize everybody to their full potential, okay? Then it talks about, we're gonna just, as you look through it, talk, represent the difference.